Question, does one set of resistance or strength training in older adults actually work? Like, is it effective? Is there any evidence to suggest that we can tailor a program around just a minimal dose approach? This is the topic of today's video. I wanna take you through some of the evidence that explores this question and give you some recommendations in terms of whether you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced trainee. Bottom line then, what is the key takeout for those that don't wanna watch the entire video? The key message is that one set, and when I say one set, I'm talking about low volume training, which consists of a full body workout, one set performed per exercise, and that is done two to three times per week. This shows approximately, I would say, based on all the research I've seen and based on this meta-analysis and systematic review that's just been published, you're probably likely to get around 80 to 90% of the benefits of higher volume training, i.e. three sets per exercise per full body workout performed two to three times per week. So for those that want to make their workouts quick, effective, and get the results you're, you're seeking, one set may be a very time efficient method of utilizing in older adults to get better physical function, to get better muscle strength, to improve metabolic health, and even sleep quality, those sorts of things can be improved dramatically with just one set. Now, for those that want to see and dig into the science a little bit more, let's go through that now. Look, just one last comment before we get started. If there are any experienced or lifelong lifters out there that are watching this, you may be thinking like, man, this guy has lost the plot. Like there's no way that one set can be enough to generate these muscle gains, these strength gains, these performance gains. I think if you stick around, don't swipe away, I think you'll find the data very interesting. This first publication by Radali, I think it's pronounced, uh, published in the journal Experimental Gerontology, uh, just up on your screen now, titled Low and high volume strength training induces similar neuromuscular improvements in muscle quality in elderly women. So let's go through some of the findings um, related to muscle strength gains, muscle mass gains, and neuromuscular performance to see how one set fared against three sets in this trial. When muscle mass changes were compared between both groups, there was no statistically significant differences. In other words, it didn't matter whether you did one set per exercise per workout or three sets per exercise per workout. The changes in the muscles that they assessed, in this case, for the first example, the rectus femoris, one of the quadricep muscles, you can see on the graph that pre-post values were comparable. Now, if we move on to vastus lateralis, a similar finding, vastus medialis, similar, me intermedius, same sort of thing. And then when they summed up the muscle thickness for the quadriceps and the muscle thickness for the elbow flexors, once again, they found that there was no differences between groups, um, irrespective of the volume of resistance training that they did. Correspondingly, again, you can see with the knee extension one repetition maximum, the elbow flexion one repetition maximum, lower body isometric maximal strength, and upper body isometric maximal strength. All of those variables, again, no significant differences between both groups in terms of low versus high volume for this group of older participants. Now, that study, you could actually pick some holes in it. Like there is some criticism that you could level at that study in terms of generalizing it more widely. One, the numbers are very small. There was only a small number of women, older women in the trial. And secondly, trying to translate research across genders can be problematic as well. So I think that's something to caveat 
into the discussion is that particular point. Now, if you're wondering whether these findings of one set being as good as three sets, here's another study that did show the same thing. But when we do look at the different meta-analysis and systematic reviews that have been done, there is definitely this preponderance of studies in older women. And in some of the more recent work, you're sort of talking around a 60% versus 40% breakdown uh, in in between genders in terms of men and women. So it's something to just keep in mind. Okay, well, let's, let's move on to some of these larger studies, these meta-analyses and systematic reviews that have been conducted in middle-aged and older men and women, um, which give us some really good insights into what type of volume is effective what is that minimum dose and if you want to go to that next level and, and tweak it and get a few more gains what do you actually need to do so the first meta-analysis that we'll have a look at which is quite a, a very good study published a couple of years ago in the journal of sports medicine titled manipulating the resistance training volume in middle-aged and older adults a systematic review with meta-analysis of the effects on muscle strength and size muscle quality and functional capacity by Marquis and colleagues now this study looked at this single versus multiple set per exercise on these various parameters in terms of what numbers were involved in the study there's 15 studies that were included 430 participants the age range was 57.9 to 70.1 years and again there was this preponderance of women around 93 percent so what we're going to do is look at the bottom line takeouts of this study in terms of the results and provide some guidance as to uh, what is needed to elicit the best outcomes for older adults that are watching Let's go through the results of this study. So we'll go through each of the parameters that were measured and then we'll get some sort of sense of this comparison of one versus three sets. Findings revealed that one versus three sets for upper body muscle strength muscle hypertrophy or muscle regrowth and functional capacity, there were no differences between one versus three sets in terms of improvements. Now, if we're talking about lower body muscle strength and muscle quality, you can see that there's differences there. Now, the thing important to recognize is that the differences are quite small in magnitude. So overall, as I said earlier, you are getting this you would have to say an 80 to 90 percent of the benefits of higher volume training. Importantly, another thing to recognize is that the confidence of this evidence to translate it very widely, there are some things to sort of consider, obviously. Uh, as, as again earlier, there, there was this 93 percent in terms of uh, the population being gender bias, and when I say gender bias, there was that 93% of older, uh, middle-aged and older women involved in this systematic review. Hence, you can, you can say, well, can I say uh, confidently that that can apply to men? Well, if it being that there's only 7%, yeah, maybe not. What I will say is that the next study that we look at does give us more clues and does then open up what we know uh, for men and women because there is a bit better balance in terms of breakdown and it does particularly look at older adults meaning sort of 60 and up so let's look at that stuff. okay let's now swing back and go back to the Rodali paper uh, which I referred to earlier in this video and let's have a look at the breakdown of what that study included for numbers, etc. So you can see uh, on your screen now that this low versus high volume resistance training uh, study uh, looked at 151 uh, randomized studies, approximately 6,300 participants in it. Of those where gender or sex wasn't reported, there was around 700 um, where that was not reported in the study. Overall then, on the data that we do have, 70% of the cohort were women. So it's a bit higher than the study before that we went through. Still not 
exactly where you'd like it to be in terms of numbers, but probably a little bit more insightful in terms of this low versus high volume question. And the median age was 68.8 years old. An important distinction to be aware of with the paper that we're going through at the moment is the difference between the previous studies that we've looked at, which explored this one set versus three set question. This paper didn't look at that. This looked at something different. It classified training in terms of low volume, medium volume, and high volume. Now, you're probably wondering, well, low volume, like how long is a piece of string? What does that actually mean? So on page 172, I think it is of this paper for those that want to go and read it, low volume resistance training, and I'm referring specifically to the lower limbs, the lower limb or leg training, because I think that's the most critical for older adults in terms of uh, lower limb strength, balance, reducing fall risk, improving functional capacity, neuromuscular performance. All of those things are tied to benefits or improvements in the lower limb strength and power and balance of, of, of those limbs. Now, to, get to, to cut to the chase and get to what the volume um, was that was performed for uh, the low volume, you're looking at five sets per week but less than 18. Now in comparison for the high volume group, for the lower limbs, they're looking at greater or equals to 27 sets per week. So you can see there is quite a bit of difference between that volume. The authors then compared these different volumes of resistance training performed to see if there was any distinctions or any particular differences that could be detected. Here are the results. Really, really interesting findings. So when we look at these different things that we're trying to see improvements in, um, i.e. muscle strength, physical function, um, muscle mass, lower limb muscle mass, hypertrophy, when we're actually assessing improvements in those things, the most effective found from the study, uh, physical function, i.e. things like timed up and go, which some of you may have performed before, and improvements or increases in lean body mass and lower limb hypertrophy were most effectively improved in, get this, lower volume resistance training. Now, whilst every group lower volume, medium or moderate volume and high volume showed improvements, across these different things that were assessed. The most effective, um, the authors concluded and their results showed that um, the lower volume, the five but less than 18 sets performed on the lower limbs per week was the most effective. Now, here's the bit of the twist to the findings. If you're looking for muscle strength, like maximizing muscle strength, this is where the high volume resistance training group was shown to be the most effective. Now that being said, even though that high volume resistance training group showed better muscle strength gains, the differences were like you're starting to split hairs. So for those who are time poor and you wanna be very efficient at your training, um, low volume resistance training is probably the way to okay, go. Okay, let's wrap this up and look at some recommendations based on some of this research that's, that I've discussed in this video. So first bullet point, what we do know is that low volume resistance training is very time efficient and highly effective in a lot of older adults. So look, if you, if you are time poor and you wanna get good gains from your training, there is probably not a need to do a vast volume of resistance training or strength training. The other one, the other important one for those that are really trying to maximize muscle strength is you would probably need to have high volume based on, on the research as it exists right now. Importantly, the third bullet point is that the findings and results that have been um, presented to you are based on only those things that have been discussed you might be going, well, how about if I want to reduce body fat or if I want to improve metabolic health? 
there could be differences and this would be something I'd like to explore in another video. Well, that concludes um, today's video on resistance training volume in old or adult and this question around um, one set versus three sets. Like, is that enough to induce positive adaptations? And the answer is basically yes. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't uh, done so. It'd be great to um, get you on board. Um, take care, stay strong, uh, and all the best. Till next time. See you later.